Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made and earth. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate Monday in the first week in Lent, and we also remember today Saints Theolosius and Lemenius. These two saints were both hermits in a cave near modern-day Syria, the time it was known as Sirhus. They spent time also with St. Maron, who's the founder of the Maronite order of monks. St. Luminius is known for building houses for the blind, and he was also a known healer. So today we remember these two monks, and let us ask them to pray for us. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, and deed, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let us say together the first form of the confidier. Almighty Father, you know my deepest secrets. I confess that I have, through my own fault, sinned against your holy laws, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I sincerely regret my sins, and I am truly sorry for offending you. I ask, Father, that in your mercy you pardon my sins. I promise to change my way of living so that through a deeper holiness, I may better serve you throughout the rest of my life. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to do one kind thing for someone else sometime in the next 24 hours. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Noah, found just and perfect, renewed the race in the time of devastation. Because of his worth, there were survivors, and with a sign to him, the deluge ended. A lasting agreement was made with him that never should all flesh be destroyed. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord our God, as Noah was saved in the ark while sin was drowned in the flood, so by the waters of baptism may our mortality be swept away and may we be brought to your holy mountain. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole assembly of the children of Israel and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. You shall not steal. 
You shall not lie or speak falsely against one another. You shall not swear falsely by my name, thus profaning the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not defraud or rob your neighbor. You shall not withhold overnight the wages of your day laborer. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind. But you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall not act dishonestly in rendering judgment. Neither show partiality to the weak nor deference to the mighty. But judge your fellow men justly. You shall not go about spreading slander among your kin. Nor shall you stand by idly when your neighbor's life is at stake. I am the Lord. You shall not bear hatred for your brother in your heart. Though you may have to reprove him, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against your fellow countrymen. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for the least one of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed 
into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen. I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today's reading, readings, <laughs> the first one being from the book of Leviticus, takes me way, way back, almost 40 years. I was in grade school at St. Anthony in South Bend. We used to have mass every weekday but we had school, and each class from the fourth grade to the eighth grade was in charge of putting together the liturgy and providing readers or lectors, as they call them now, and servers and so forth for that particular day's mass. This happened to be our class's day, and I was chosen for the first time in fourth grade to read publicly this particular reading can imagine for someone in fourth grade, the word Leviticus was very hard to pronounce. They gave us a week to practice the reading before we, we did it, but I did. And it, it's indelibly in my mind, the old translation anyway, but today we have this. And I think it kind of goes about where we plant seeds in our lives or have seeds planted in our lives, if you will. So long ago, having this indelibly in my mind, basically the commandments from Leviticus, which is the legal book of the Pentateuch, the first five books. It's always been in my mind, and every decision I've made somehow has been formed by these things. Shall not steal, shall not lie or speak falsely to one another, you shall not swear falsely by my name, defraud or rob your neighbor, withhold wages from your labor, curse of death, put a stumbling block in front of the blind, so on and so forth. And then we have our gospel today, which kind of dovetails onto this book, the reading from Leviticus. Because Jesus here is saying, when the second coming happens, he's going to divide people on his right and on his left. Now that's significant in and of itself because in Latin, the Latin form for left is sinistera. That's where we get the word sinister from. So the left has historically been seen as evil and the right as good. So anything we do with our left hand is considered evil historically and the right hand good historically. Um, my apologies to any who are left-handed. That is not my intention to offend anybody. It's just historically speaking, the way things were. And tangentially, when Jesus says, turn the other cheek, if, if someone strikes you on your left cheek, give them the right one as well. Because that means that they have to be... Yet, if they strike you with the right hand, that makes you an equal. If they strike you with the left hand, that's an inferior. So if someone strikes you on the right, yeah, on the on your right cheek, means inferior. So if you turn the other cheek, that means you're forcing them to make you an equal. So here we have the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. The sheep are the ones that follow what Jesus says. The goats are the ones who do not. And he tells us what we need to do to end up on the right side. And that is take care of people in this world. That means we 
And during Lent, we can really kind of dive into this because Lent is a time for us of sacrifice. And what we sacrifice means we're probably giving something up. For example, red meat on Fridays or fasting on Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, and whenever you'd like to do it in between. But here it says, I was hungry and you gave me food. Perhaps what one thing we, when we fast, what we don't eat, we could contribute in kind to those who are needy. Thirsty and you gave me drink. A stranger and you welcomed me. How many times have we had strangers come into our church or our business or wherever and we ignored them or weren't warm to them? Naked and you clothed me. How many people go without clothing and we can maybe give them some of our excess? Ill and you cared for me. Of course, we have doctors and nurses whom we are more than reliant upon nowadays, but we can care for them as well, to the ill. In prison, and you visited me. Now, that's an interesting one. And that's one that's always stuck with me as well. When I was in seminary, I had my first opportunity to do some prison ministry at a Supermax prison in Massachusetts. And then at my time in uh, Michigan, was able to do some volunteer work at the Wayne County Jail for a few years. And a lot of us are scared, and we should be, to go into a place full of criminals. But I found something out that is very, very interesting in my time there, and that is that save but for one decision most of the time could have been me on the other side of the bars if I maybe made one decision differently in my life. And most of the people, I mean, there are some who are chronic habitual criminals that need m other help, but most people behind those bars are there because they did one thing, and that one thing has defined them now for the rest of their lives. Now, we are called as followers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to look at the whole person. Not just one event in their lives. And how many of us have judged others because of one thing that they did and not the pattern of their lives? So when we think of those who are in prison, and go to visit them. We are doing them the favor of not only just being present for them, but recognizing their humanity beyond that one event in their lives for which they are paying. Paying that debt to society and hopefully never doing it again. So same thing with hunger and you gave me food, thirsty and you gave me drink, stranger and you welcomed me not stealing, not speaking falsely to one another, not going and so forth. Everything in our readings today point to looking at the whole person and following these laws and rules that God has put forward for us because he knows how we're made and he knows what makes us the fullness of humanity. Jesus, being fully divine and fully human, knows what it means, what we have to do to fully live our humanity. It's in what he says in the gospel. It's in following what's in Leviticus. Because in that way, we live in true freedom. Not in the license to do whatever we want, but in the freedom to choose the right and the good and to take care of others and love our neighbors as or more than ourselves so that we, one day, may be able to have the opportunity to join our Savior in eternal life. Hopefully ending up on the right and not on the left, joined with God, not separated from him. So perhaps as we continue these early days of our Lenten journey, we can think of those ways that we can care for others in the world, maybe make personal connections with those that we haven't before, and maybe do one thing to make their life a little better by fulfilling one of their needs so that we can end up on the right and not on the Sinestria left. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord be with you. We turn to the great kindness of God the Father, asking him to answer us with his constant help. In faith we pray, and our response is, Lord, have mercy. For the church throughout the world, that the Lord may lead us into a deeper conversion of heart through the practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all those who govern at the local, state, and federal levels, that the Spirit may guide them in their decision-making for the common good, and that they work for an end to the twin evils of abortion and euthanasia. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those affected by the extreme winter weather and unprecedented challenges that all may find relief and care through Christ, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our parish family, that we may be one in the good will of Christ by supporting the works of his church, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, that they may be brought to health and wholeness through the mercy of Christ, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Well, the intention of this Holy Mass, which is for those who are on our parish prayer list, as well as any of those who are suffering right now, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all of our beloved dead and those who will die today, that they may share in the gift and promise of eternal life, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Loving Father, guide us in right paths and grant us the grace needed to live lives which are holy and pleasing to you. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. God told Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all mortal creatures that are on the earth. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Heavenly Father, make us worthy to bring these gifts to you. May this offering cleanse us from our sins and make us deserving of your Son's sacrifice. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through our fasting, you increase divine life within us. You preserve us from sin and lead us into eternal life. Through our abstinence, you confirm us in goodness and curb our unbridled vices. As we commemorate this 40-day fast of your Son, may we, together with him, give you glory. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice of the Mass will continue with Eucharistic Prayer 5, which is found on page 92, if you are following along. Blessed are you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercy and God of all consolation. For you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He then established a lasting memorial of your salvation. On the evening in which he willingly surrendered himself, he took bread, gave you thanks, blessed it, and broke it, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup. In the same way, he gave you thanks and blessed it, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So we recall before you, Father, the incarnation of your Son, his words and deeds, how he humbled himself and obediently accepted death, even death on the cross. Therefore you have raised him up and given him a name which is above every name, so that in heaven and under the earth every knee shall bow and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. We offer this sacrifice of your Son before you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving, and ask that you accept this oblation. Send your Holy Spirit and fill these gifts with his life-giving power, that they may be for us the body and blood of your dearly beloved Son. Grant that the bread which we break may be the body of our Lord, and the cup over which we give thanks may be one with the blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The company of Mary, the mother of God, with your apostles and martyrs, Holy Willibrod, Thessalonius, Luminius, and all the saints, together with Anthony, our prime bishop, and Jerry, our bishop, and with all bishops, priests, and deacons, as well as your whole church, we praise and glorify you and look forward to the coming of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray now with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait 
and joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord, Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Let's say together the second communion prayer. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are our faithful high priest, tempted in the wilderness, so to help others who are tempted. Through this Holy Communion, aid, strengthen, and purify us, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join me now for a prayer in a prayer for peace in our world, country, state, and locality with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant not so much that I may seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for joining us today for our Holy Mass. We pray that you'll join us for the rest of the week at noon, Central Standard Time, and on Sunday for the second Sunday in Advent at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Also on Wednesday, we will be offering the Stations of the Cross at 6 p.m. And if we can, we'll live stream it. If but I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that yet logistically. But please come here, join us for the stations on Wednesday at 6 p.m., February 24th. May God bless each and every one of you. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of each other, and always remain in a state of grace. These 40 days of Lent, O oh Lord, with you we fast and pray. Teach us to discipline our wills and follow, Lord, your way.